I got it. There it is. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And now I share my screen. Go ahead. Yes. I'll mute myself. All right. And how does that look on your end? Can you see my screen? I just muted myself. Yes, it looks good. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. So welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to share one of my interests and passions, uh, which is food and nutrition and all things eating. Um, I'm a registered dietitian by profession, and I'm currently working um, as a wellness coach, uh, which is a little bit more comprehensive, including all aspects of wellness, um, including uh, nutrition. And the affordable part, I like to say frugality runs in my veins, <laughs> whether by nature or nurture, I, I find it a fun challenge um, to uh, bust some myths uh, about this uh, topic. So let me just show you um, what I hope to accomplish today. Um, and I, <clears throat> I was also telling uh, Leslie, if I were in person, my preferred way of doing this would be to facilitate a conversation um, because I'm sure you all uh, have knowledge and experience and good ideas about this as well. Um, I haven't had quite the great success uh, doing that on Zoom, but I, do um, encourage you to pause and ask questions anywhere along the way. You don't need to wait to the end. I think we're a small enough group to either be unmuted or to unmute or to use the chat. Uh, and Leslie will keep an eye on that. So interrupt me at any time. Um, but here's what I thought we could talk about, which is reviewing the basics of a healthy diet. Um, then look at how to save money with meal planning. Uh, offer some tips for grocery shopping on a budget, um, cooking healthfully on a budget, and finally healthy eating on the go uh, would be some of the topics I hope to uh, cover today. Um, but before I jump into that, I'd love to hear whether you have any particular questions to begin with or topics that you are hoping uh, to hear about. Can you, can you hear me? I can. Um, how about uh, helping people who have to cook for one person? Okay, let's, let's tie that all in because um, <laughs> that is important. And I believe that um, I'll try as we go along to think of some of the tips that would do that because that does present a little bit more of a challenge, doesn't it? Yes, it, well, after cooking for five, <laughs> going down to one. Yes, that is a big yeah. adjustment. And it creates some opportunities as well, right? There's some sense if you cook for five, you might eat uh, <laughs> eat for one for five days. Yeah, so right. It'll work. So it gets boring. Exactly, we'll play with that. Does anybody else um, have anything in particular or questions you hoped to have answered? All right, so the myths I'd like to bust are threefold. One, that healthy eating is expensive, one that healthy eating is time consuming, and one that healthy eating is complicated. Uh, so hence the name, uh, we're talking about it, how it can be healthy, fast, and affordable all in one fell swoop. So getting started, when you think of healthy eating, what are some things that come to mind? What do you already know about healthy eating? What does that look like? Hi, Lynn here. I feel like healthy eating is eating um, fresh stuff, not really prepackaged stuff. Um, and then also, I also, and if I do eat prepackaged stuff, because it's hard for me to look at the calories for fresh produce, but looking at the calories and, and um, other nutritional stuff on um, prepackaged stuff. Okay. So yeah, that whole idea of eating more whole foods and less processed foods is absolutely a part of healthy eating. And you're right, the healthiest foods don't tend to have the nutrition facts label. <laughs> so you can be assured when you're choosing fruits or vegetables that you've got the uh, highest epitome of healthy eating. Um, but when you do turn to some of uh, packaged foods using the, the food label to compare and look for foods maybe that are higher in fiber or lower in sugar um, or lower in salt or sodium, uh, can be a great way um, to make a good choice. 
And we're gonna show you one more um, way to not only look at the nutrition, but the cost and how to compare those as well. All right, and I'm... So <laughs> bear with me here. I used a presentation that uh, I had used for something else and didn't take out the uh, things. But basically we talk about, um, you know, eating in addition to a whole food diet, one that is mostly plant-based. Uh, so that absolutely doesn't mean becoming a vegetarian, but it does mean that most of the food on your plate and in your meals and snacks throughout the day are come from plants. So what does that look like? Of course, there's an abundance of fruits and vegetables in a healthy diet. Um, whole grains, we distinguish whole grains uh, from things made with refined grains. So we think the difference between say whole wheat flour and white flour um, and try to get at least half our grains during the day from um, whole grains. Uh, when we choose dairy products, which can be part of a healthy diet, um, trying to choose low fat and fat free um, is a good way to get fewer calories. Um, when we choose fats in our diets, heart healthy fats would be things like um, using oils for cooking, like extra virgin olive oil, the fat from fish, the fat from nuts, the fat from avocados, those are all thought to be good for the heart as is opposed to fats from processed and packaged foods and too much fat um, you know, from animal products, meat and dairy. And then finally, um, including protein rich food, if you're looking for it from plants, beans and nuts um, are great sources, eggs, Fish a couple times a week is recommended for good heart healthy chicken, turkey. Um, and then if you're choosing meat, lean meats uh, would be part of that. So this um, is example of how you would put that all together. This actually comes, uh, it's called the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate and it's a takeoff on the government um, choose my plate that I'm gonna show on the next slide. But it reminds us how to balance these foods in, in the diet, and it shows that half our meals, um, must, you know, might come from vegetables and fruits, and then the other half of the meal would be split between some sort of healthy protein choice that we just talked about, and those are listed here. Um, and I like to add to this and say where it says whole grains, that could be whole grains, or it could be a starchy vegetable like corn or peas or sweet potatoes, or even potatoes with the skin are a nutritious uh, option. Um, I think they pull that out, trying to get away from the American ten <laughs> uh, tendency towards French fries <laughs> as their potatoes. Um, but anyway, that gives kind of an idea of the balance. And we talked about using healthy oils for cooking um, and beverage of choice being water. Uh, you know, dairy is a great choice. A couple of servings a day as well. I find that many people um, you know, don't tolerate uh, that as well. So share the way I choose this plate without having all these weird self-sabotaging thoughts that stop them from acting. Jennifer, I'm not sure if you're able to. Oh wait, okay. I, I was hearing some background noise. I can't mute. Um, <laughs> that was me. But, oh, okay, but it's uh, okay. That's I, fine. I turned. I turned it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't have the slides up yeah. on, on my screen. I got you. Okay. Are, are you seeing them now? No. You're not? Okay. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Are you on the speaker view? Um, that might. Um, Wait a minute. Jennifer Fine. So you're not, I'm not sure what view you're seeing. One second, Jennifer. Uh -huh. No worries. I, I'm I'm really back to uh, Google. Oh. What I what I can get. I can hear you. You're not seeing the Zoom screen. Okay. Um, if you. No. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you see a little Zoom icon on your computer? It may have closed. You may have accidentally. It may have closed down. If Mary, you... it might be at the bottom of the screen, the little yeah. blue square that you, you could open. click on. Click on it. Yeah, it would probably open up again. 
Well, go ahead. I can okay. hear you. I can and hear Mary, you. Um, we are recording it. So then if you want to see it with the slides. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll be okay. able to see that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I have seen carrots and peas. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> So I showed the last slide was the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate. Here's the one you're probably familiar with. It shows up uh, almost everywhere, but I put this one up here as well. It's similar um, because it offers a great website, myplate.gov, uh, for an abundance of information. You can do a, um, a little assessment for yourself to see how many servings from each group based on your personal information. So it's a really good website for general uh, nutrition information. So I share that with you. And we move on to um, the habit of meal planning. And I'm just curious to throw out there, um, what do you do currently uh, for planning meals? What are your habits in that regard? If any, or is it wing it every night? <laughs> Wing it. <laughs> Wing it, okay. <laughs> Wing it as well. <laughs> See what leftovers I have. <laughs> All right, so that's a great strategy. Yeah, so one of the best ways to save money is to plan ahead. There's so many benefits um, to planning ahead. Um, it is worth noting that it does take some time up front and a little bit of effort, um, but down the road for many people, they find it less stressful. There certainly is a lot less waste, a lot less uh, food thrown away. The, you personalize the menus to your taste, um, you know, and in involve a family. Um, so that is exactly um, the first step um, when I think of some meal planning tips is to begin thinking what you're gonna have. And this can be in a very formal way. And I'll show you some templates in a minute that you might use for planning. Or it can be making a mental note, what kind of things you want to have for the week. And by starting with what's on hand and what's about to go bad first is a great way to uh, get started so that we're not throwing away uh, things. Um, after that, uh, what's on sale may help save money. Uh, if you don't get the sale flyer delivered to your house in the mail or in the newspaper, uh, they are available online. And so planning meals around uh, what's on sale can uh, be really helpful as well. Another tip is to write down your meals. Um, and so that might start with creating a list of recipes to try. Maybe you just simply write that, start by keeping a list of foods that you enjoy, that the family enjoys, that you're comfortable cooking. And then um, if you, you know, that might be enough. <laughs> um, but if you feel the need for more variety or to increase uh, the helpfulness, then you can begin to look for different recipe or meal ideas and add to your list as you go um, and add that to the rotation. Uh, another um, idea is to think about your schedule for the week. So if there's especially busy days, you might want to use plant leftovers on that day or something super simple to prepare. Um, and then of course the age old adage of making a grocery list. So this helps make sure you have all sorts of helpful ingredients and foods on hand for making a healthy meal. And it also helps save money to know what you're going for. Um, just a little uh, hint on that is to build your list as you go, as you run out of things, um, keep a running tally. The fewer times you go to the store, the more money you will save. So there are statistics that show every time we go to the store, that increases uh, the amount of uh, money we spend at the grocery store um, overall. So it's better to do, you know, one big trip uh, each week or each month, maybe for saving up on non-perishables, weekly for perishables, a midweek run in for just, you know, um, some things and leave it at that. Um, and so, We'll talk too about um, buying a combination of fresh, frozen, and canned foods. Again, that can keep you using the fresh foods up at the beginning of the week and then falling back as the week goes on of fresh produce that lasts longer um, or even a combination of uh, frozen and canned foods. So I just wanted to show you if you decided to um, begin planning some meals, um, you know, here's something I found online and I share with a lot of my um, coaching participants. This is a, a super simple one where maybe you just start planning dinners 
um, and jot down a few ideas. Again, keeping that plate balance. What, what protein am I gonna have? What starch, what whole, you know, grain or starchy vegetable? What um, uh, non-starchy vegetables am I gonna have? And as you write down, you, you can look and see what you have. And then on the right, there's a shopping list. You can add needed ingredients. And then uh, when it's time to go to the store, you cut it in half. The menus go on the fridge for the week and the uh, shopping list goes with you. If you want to get really involved, this one came from the myplate.gov um, website. You can print it off. But this allows you to plan not only dinners, but breakfast and lunch and snacks. So that um, is another format. Um, you know, so you may have what uh, works for you, but that just gives you an idea of what some things could look like. All right, so we talk about um, some additional uh, meal planning tips. Uh, you know, this kind of goes into some meal prepping. There's a whole phenomenon of meal prepping where busy, probably mostly working people, but not necessarily will, you know, prepare a week's worth of lunches at a time or on Sunday, spend some time cooking and portioning things out so that dinners are ready uh, when you get home from work real quickly. Um, and that can seem overwhelming to do a whole week's worth, um, but it's fine to just, you know, uh, start small and build on it. So the designating days for tasks would be having a shopping day. Maybe there's, uh, you know, uh, a prep day, um, you know, uh, so that you're not doing it all at once. And then the other thing that's really helpful with that, I forgot to show on the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate, but one of the components that complements nutrition um, for healthy living is exercise. Uh, so I have quite a few people who will prepare enough for two meals on one day so they can exercise on the alternate days. And that's a beautiful plan. So we talk about, um, you know, wanting to save time as well. Crock pot meals or meals that can be assembled and go in the freezer for busy days are also helpful. Um, selecting ingredients, uh, recipes with over... Uh, lapping ingredients might mean something like making a big pot, pot of brown rice to serve with a stir fry the next, and then, um, you know, beans and rice and vegetables another day. So the same ingredient, cooking chicken with some sides one day, and then making that chicken into soup or sandwiches uh, on a follow-up day. Um, incorporating foods that are in season uh, can be helpful. And if you enjoy farm stands and farmer markets, they're often a good place to get some good bargains. Um, I always keep, ask people, the, the most missing food group when people are looking at their dinners are vegetables. So sometimes I encourage you to begin getting in the habit of asking yourself, what vegetable will I have? Uh, when thinking about just a, about every meal, um, ask yourself that question. And then when you're doing meal planning, think about the weekend. Sometimes we forget about that um, because we have more free time, but maybe we don't want to spend the whole uh, weekend meal prepping, uh, you know, preparing food. So um, including that in our plan can help. And then finally, keeping a well-stocked pantry. Um, even if you don't have like a room in your kitchen, um, you know, a, a room, you know, a linen closet, there can be all sorts of a bin you know, something so that you have a variety of uh, foods on hand that you could pull together a meal in a moment's notice. And I like to challenge you. One idea is to create an emergency meal list. Maybe think of three meals that you could make with pantry ingredients when you're tempted to order takeout. <laughs> and uh, that meal could go together in 15 minutes, uh, you know, less time than it would take the delivery to arrive. Um, so things like that would be jarred pasta sauce and whole wheat pasta, frozen vegetables, canned beans, instant rice, uh, things like that can um, help with that. All right. So we begin to think meal by meal. What are some fun and interesting things to have? And I'm putting a bunch up here. Um, overnight oats. Uh, can be done two ways. If you're doing steel cut oats that take a long time uh, to cook, you can make a big batch and put them in containers to reheat. The picture here shows oats that have been just soaked overnight. Um, and these can last up to a week, so they're great for meal prepping. Uh, eggs is a great protein source, and it's fun to include vegetables at a breakfast. So the veggie and egg burrito on a whole wheat tortilla. A breakfast sandwich you make yourself, like on a whole wheat English muffin with a slice of cheese and an egg and a slice of tomato or pepper. 
can be made in pennies compared to what you pay going to a fast food restaurant. A frittata, mini frittatas made in muffin pans or in a regular pan and cut into squares. That's egg and vegetable combination. Smoothie bags are popular. This is good for using up produce. It's about to go. So putting berries, banana, greens, and the plastic bags, and all you do in the morning is put them in the uh, blender, uh, maybe with a little yogurt or uh, liquid, and they're ready to go. Uh, for people who are staying away from animal products, tofu can be scrambled like eggs with vegetables. And it's kind of fun. Um, yogurt parfaits, layering plain or lightly sweetened yogurt with fruit um, and some nuts, um, again, can be made ahead and are um, inexpensive breakfast ideas to be made at home, whether you have the entire morning of leisure or whether you need to get out the door in minutes, those are some ideas. And then we put up what should your meal look like and healthy uh, for dinner and lunch. This looks back to our healthy plate balance. You want to choose, you know, a quarter of your plate is going to be a whole grain, a starchy vegetable, a legume. You're going to include one or two um, non-starchy vegetables. This is especially important if, you know, you're health conscious or weight conscious. Those non-starchy vegetables are super filling um, without a whole lot of calories. And um, so you might think of cooking two different vegetables or having a cooked vegetable and a salad, and that gives you that half plate concept. And then some sort of protein. So, um, you know, um, that can be either um, plant-based or not. So just a few ideas for some fun things and each of these we'll go through. Um, starches, you could use whole uh, grain like brown rice, um, whole wheat pasta, a baked sweet potato is inexpensive and soup, you know, in five minutes in the microwave, you've, you've got uh, a great side dish. Canned beans and lentils can be added to foods like rice or vegetables um, and, and provide both starch and protein. Uh, so making your vegetables taste good is uh, number one. Trying them roasted or grilled this time of year can bring out the natural sweetness. Stir frying um, is quick and easy. Um, trying to really build out an interesting salad. Um, you know, if your idea of salad is iceberg lettuce and a cucumber and a tomato, begin to think of all the different colored vegetables you could add and some add-ins to make it fun, some seeds or some nuts. You know, a sprinkle of a strong flavored cheese can make it interesting. Um, mason jar salads of great popularity. If you're taking lunch to work, you layer the salads in the jar. Um, zoodles I put, a lot of people are having fun and you can buy them this way at the store with ricing vegetables or turning them into noodles um, just to, to add some variety. And then consider your protein sources. Um, fish, egg, chicken, turkey are the healthiest. Of course, small portions of lean meat fit into a healthy eating pattern. Um, veggie burgers, like a black bean burger, um, beans, all of those uh, are healthy and low cost choices. And then think about how you put this all together. This does not have to look like that healthy eating plate where you're putting quadrants <laughs> of um, things. You can include all the food groups together. For example, a veggie or a turkey chili, crock pot stews, soups, curries. One of my favorite things to play with now is a sheet pan dinner where the meat, you know, you might have a chicken sausage and some butternut squash and Brussels sprouts um, and some potatoes all on the same pan. So clean up is quick and easy. Um, sorry to interrupt right quick. What exactly is a zoodle? <laughs> so those of you seen there, there's, um, you can either buy a little gizmo to take like a zucchini or a sweet potato and it turns it into noodles. Um, I've even seen that they do them in the, uh, all, have them already done in the produce section of the store. Um, you know, so some people are using them for lower carb diets as a pasta substitute. I put them in there because I think they're awfully fun way of eating vegetables, especially for kids, um, you know even for people not following low carb uh, eating patterns. Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so it's just trying to break out and be creative. You know, the other vegetable things, like kale salads is a, a whole phenomenon. If you've never tried that, there's a zillion recipes out there. Leslie will give you hers. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a rocking kale salad, right? <laughs> yeah, Plus healthy. the one at the Stop and Shop Deli. Yeah. But I didn't mention that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So I just uh, that's you. just to get the creative juices going as you begin to think about what meals you might enjoy and your family might enjoy. Jennifer, can I just uh, interrupt real quick and thank you for not having duck uh, under duck on the menu. I left that off. The, I left that off the poultry list. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> so as you think about saving money at the grocery store, what are some of the things you're doing already or the tips you might share with each other? All right, well, let's take a look. <laughs> Number one item on the list if we were playing Family Feud would be to have a list and to promise yourself to stick to it. I think uh, impulse shopping can add uh, a significant uh, cost onto our uh, grocery store experience. Um, if you haven't already used the store flyer for planning your meals, take a quick look when you get there. Stocking up on canned goods, you know, and dry goods when they're on sale is a great way to save money. If you're coupon clippers, in my heyday, uh, I saw a huge challenge in that, um, but that can save money. Signing up for the loyalty cards to make sure you're getting the lowest price on things. This one goes along with not with making a list. <laughs> yeah. You all heard the adage, never go to the store hungry. Um, you tend to buy things that aren't as healthy and <laughs> um, hard to stick to your budget. So have a healthy snack before you go or go after a meal. Shopping the perimeter of the store is a tip you might have heard out there. Um, if you think about the outside edge of the store, you hit the produce with all the fruits and vegetables, you hit the fresh uh, meats, you hit the fresh dairy, um, and those tend to be those foods, um, I think it was Lynn that said before, that don't have a nutrition facts label on them um, and they are the healthiest. Um, so shop the perimeter freely. And then when you're shopping the aisles, do it with some uh, wisdom, <laughs> some caution and consideration. That's where in the aisles of the store, you'll be wanting to maybe do some label uh, comparison. And then finally, I put on here to shop where the deals are. Um, the, you know, I find that I can find really good whole grain um, products for much less money when I go to Trader Joe's um, and wholesale clubs. If you can use things in bulk or, or store them, they often have good prices. Um, there's food co-ops. I know there's one in West Warwick called Project Hand Up that you can do more of a co-op thing where you pay for a bag and, you know, you get different things. So um, there's a new one. I think I'm called Hope Market in East Providence. Um, again, that's designed to help um, even people on the tightest budget afford healthy uh, food. So, um, you know, know where your, where your good deals are. All right, so I thought we'd shop the perimeters <laughs> as we go around today and go through each food group and offer some tips on um, how to save some money. So we've got um, sh choosing produce and season tends to be what's on sale and tend to be not only the lo lowest price, but the best taste. Um, and it's also fun to look forward to new foods as the seasons go around. Um, I encourage you to compare the cost of fresh and canned and frozen varieties. Quick true or false question. If I were to ask, say this statement, frozen vegetables are just as nutritious as fresh. Would you guess true or false? True. True. Yeah. Some some people are shy away from them thinking they're not as nutritious, but frozen and even to an extent canned vegetables are picked at the uh, peak of ripeness and therefore nutrition, flash frozen. Um, so they can um, be a great way. They're already trimmed. They're already washed and peeled. They're ready to eat. Um, you can stock up when they're on sale. So consider frozen varieties. Um, as, as almost equals to fresh. Uh, they can be added to casseroles, soups, stews. They can be served as a side dish, um, you know, and, and flavored well. Um, canned vegetables are fine as well. There's some varieties that I, even, you know, enjoy making a bean salad with canned beans or using canned beets in a salad. Um, and of course, canned beans. So one tip there is either to choose lower sodium varieties um, and flavor with things like lemon juice and vinegar and herbs and spices and onion and garlic and hot sauce. Those all add flavor without salt. 
um, or to just give them a, a rinse and rinsing does remove some of the extra salt if you're using those. Um, it can be tempting when fresh produce is on sale to get excited and buy too much, um, but you know you want to buy just enough that you can use up before it goes bad. Um, but a quick tip, if things are going bad and you know you won't have time to cook them, um, you saw those smoothie bags before, throw them in the freezer. Um, the texture won't be the same when they come out, but if you're making a soup or a smoothie, you won't know the difference. Um, and I've even been saving vegetable scraps uh, and using them to make a homemade vegetable broth, which is super easy. You just keep a, a, a bag in the freezer, um, adding your clippings and your about to go vegetables, <laughs> add some water and simmer for a while. And um, you know, you've got a vegetable broth to use in soup or, or other dishes. Um, buying in bulk when items are sale is a good idea as long as you can use them. Um, and this originally said avoid pre-washed and pre-cut produce, but I changed the wording this time to say consider carefully. So here's the thing, you're going to pay more if somebody else does the cutting um, and they will go bad more quickly. But um, if it's a choice between I need to buy those because I need dinner on the table in 15 minutes and it's that or a trip through McDonald's, I believe buying the pre-washed and cut produce will save you money um, and health. And in that case, it would be a good idea. <laughs> Any green thumbs out there gardening? Uh, well, it has some initial upfront costs, can be a fun way to get um, exercise and get outside and have some um, low cost produce available. All right, so let's look at ways to get some protein uh, in your diet that's economical. And you got a clue by the picture I chose for this slide. Um, I think that meat and poultry and fish can be one of the most expensive parts of our food budget, um, but there's a way to have it all. Um, and so just um, looking at the protein foods, peas, beans, lentils, um, come in cans or dried. I buy them in the cans. You can probably even save more money if you cook them from dry and then freeze them. Some people swear that tastes better as well. Um, so if you like to do that. Um, but this is a great way to get protein in the healthiest form. You, so I encourage you maybe a couple days a week to choose a bean-based meal, a meatless meal um, to save money and for health. But another way, if that doesn't appeal, is just to go part way. So what do I mean by going part way? Well, if you made a vegetable soup, maybe you throw a can of white beans in there for an Italian minestrone soup. So that makes a side dish into a main meal. Um, tacos, maybe you throw a can of black beans in with the meat. So it stretches the meat and it adds the healthfulness of the beans. Maybe a can of lentils um, in a sloppy Joe mix or um, you know something would be a pea or a spaghetti sauce. Uh, would be other ways to stretch the meat and um, not have to go uh, all the way. Some tips on buying seafood that doesn't have to be expensive. Probably the e least expensive way is canned tuna, canned salmon, canned sardines, especially when they go on sale, you can't stock up on those. Um, but even if you're buying fresh fish, buying it, what's on sale that week, and remember your portion size. This would go for meat as well. A portion size of meat um, or chicken or fish is about the size of the palm of your hand, three or four ounces. Um, if you were to get that in a restaurant, you would be getting double, even triple that as the meat protein. But from a health perspective and a cost perspective, um, you can have um, you know, a nice cut of meat or fish by balancing out by having plenty of side dishes to help fill up on. So that works for both the budget and the health. Um, can I ask a question? And yeah, just, please. About tuna. Um, I had um, a health presentation in one of my um, classes where they talked about um, looking for a certain kind of tuna, like the albacore versus, um, is it white or? Yeah, so yeah. So, are you asking health or cost or? Yeah, um, health, I, um, I forget which one now. So I sort of have avoided tuna <laughs> since. Yeah, the, so. Uh, um, so there's different, you know, concerns about tuna. I'd say if you want, you know, without going into all the different risk factors, having tuna a couple times a week is fine. You know, make, we might make an exception for a pregnant woman. Less mercury actually in a light tuna 
Okay. Um, and that's less cost and just as nutritious. So one of the reasons we like to eat uh, fish is for the omega-3 fatty acids are supposed to give a, a, a huge health benefit. And you're going to find those in all. So from a cost saving, buy the light tuna. Um, light. Okay. Buy it on sale. Um, and, and that's a fine choice. Thank but you. Anybody else want to pipe in with ideas um, or questions? Yeah, so, and then when we go, go to meat and chicken and fish, if you have the room in your freezer, generally buying it in the big family packs, you can get a better price. Um, if you can put it into smaller packages and freeze it, that, there's that cooking for one, you know, when you buy a package and then, um, you know, put it into smaller uh, packages and freeze so you can take one out and they thaw quickly. Um, if you're willing, oftentimes there's fantastic deals on poultry with the bone and the skin still on. Um, you know, you can see it as low as like 59 cents for chicken drumsticks. Um, so very affordable, um, you know, and then cooking extras to use the cooked chicken for other meals. Um, from a health perspective, when you, if you are going to buy meat, um, beef or pork, choosing the leanest cuts. Um, and sometimes leanest cuts need a little tender cooking. So slow cooking or a marinade um, or tenderizing can make them just as appealing. Um, so I, all of these can be done, you know, with less cost. All right, so quickly we'll go on to dairy foods. Um, best buys here. You wanna buy your milk in amounts that you won't have to throw away. There is something called ultra pasteurized. If you're living alone and don't go through the milk that fast, that might be a great bargain because it doesn't go um, bad as quickly. Of course, I encourage you to buy the lower fat varieties. They're just as nutrition, all the calcium protein, <laughs> um, fraction of the calories. Non-fat dried milk is nice to keep on hand. That's a great low cost thing. If you use it in cooking, you'll never know the difference. For cheese, um, you may want to compare costs. It may be less expensive to buy a block of cheese and slice it or grate it on your own. Um, and I'm going to show you unit pricing on how to do that in a minute. You know, generally buying a large container of yogurt and portioning out yourself into individuals is less expensive than buying individual cups. And store brands and dairy, it's uh, often a, a, a great deal that way. How about whole grains? We talk about making at least half your grain intake from whole grains. Um, buying them plain and flavoring them yourself is a great way. So buy regular oatmeal, the big old fashioned oats canister and add your own brown sugar or a little syrup. You can control how much you put in. Probably you'll use less than they put in those packets and it's much more economical. Um, so you can add your own fruit uh, to those. Um, Again, instead of a little tiny rice pilaf mix that is going to be expensive, buying your own rice, cooking it up in bulk, um, you know, can be a great way. And then flavoring it yourself. Um, oh, that's funny. My I got a little box mix off, but a lot of times, some of the whole grains that are most common and palatable people would be brown rice, um, whole wheat pasta instead of white pasta. Um, but there are fun grains out there. If you've never tried something like quinoa or farro or barley, that's an old fashioned one that can make a comeback. All these grains can be cooked in boiling water, just like pasta and drained. That's how I do my brown rice. Some people say it's too hard to cook, um, but you can do that up ahead for any of the grains, make a big um, pot of it, and then put them into little containers to freeze already cooked. So that saves a huge amount of money. I saw them selling cooked brown rice at Trader Joe's for like, must be 10 times the cost of what it would cost to make yourself. Um, whole wheat pasta is a great low cost alternative um, for snacks, um, whole grain crackers, something like a Triscuit or popping your own popcorn. Um, the old fashioned way on the stove gives you a snack for pennies. It's also healthy. Um, if you're choosing breakfast cereals, either for breakfast or a snack, looking for one that's high fiber and low in sugar, and then adding maybe your own fruit or some nuts, um, you know, and skipping the sugary stuff is a good health benefit and a cost benefit. Can I, can I ask another question here? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I see a lot of multigrain. That does not necessarily mean whole grain, right? 
Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. I Whenever yeah. I see multigrain, in my mind, I said, that's probably white bread with a little caramel color and some oats sprinkled on the top. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Um, so you want to, for that, read your label. If the bread says 100% whole wheat, you're in good shape. Or if the first ingredient says whole wheat, okay, you've got a, a good bread. If the first ingredient says wheat, that's white flour. <laughs> um, all flour you know, that we use is white, uh, wheat, um, but you're looking for the words whole wheat. And that's to get the most fiber and the most nutrition there. There's my little box with some of the less common, uh, oh, sorry, whole grains. Um, and a common thing is to make a grain bowl where you pick one of these grains in the bottom, uh, cook up a vegetable or put some raw veggies in and a little protein, maybe a little uh, flavoring or sauce. And uh, that makes a quick and easy meal. So is enriched grains then that's not necessarily whole then? Exactly. So basically the difference, if you think of um, a grain, um, it comes in nature with an outer layer called the bran and an inner part called the germ. That's where most of the nutrition is. All the fiber are in those two parts and in the germ are your vitamins and your minerals. Um, so to make white flour, the manufacturers strip off the bran, they strip off the um, germ and all that's left is that starchy white middle and that is not very nutritious so they enrich it they add vitamins back into it and that's what enriched flour is the white starchy middles with synthetic vitamins and so that's why if you can make things made with whole wheat flour instead of white flour you're getting the nutritious bran and germ ground right into it good question <laughs> Those are the tricky words. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. So I just wanted to show, so we've gone around the store, all the categories. And one more thing, um, just to bring to your attention, maybe you all already know this, but sometimes it can be really hard to tell whether you're getting a good deal or not, because the containers are different, right? So this shows like a big container and a little container of yogurt. How do you know? And so the best thing to learn for comparing things like this is the unit price um, will tell you how, how much per ounce. So when you buy this big one, it's showing it's five cents an ounce versus 12 cents in the smaller. And that can help you compare prices between different brands and different package sizes when they're different. So this isn't just for yogurt, it's for all the foods on the shelf. You can use this to help you decide which costs less. Are, are you familiar with using unit pricing to help make choices? Is that something? Yeah. Yeah. I always just use the calculator on my phone and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, basically, what that is, it's taking this price, a hundred, a dollar sixty-two. This must be old, and dividing it by that number of ounces on the package, right, to get that. So it might save you a little, um, a little math in the in the aisle. All right, and just a couple more things before we move on. I have so many people say, oh, it costs so much more to eat healthy um, than unhealthy, but I think of a lot of packaged foods are very expensive for what they are. Um, and so sometimes it's um, making healthy substitutes that can keep the budget in check. Drinking water is one of the biggest one. There's absolutely no nutrition in soda or other sugary beverages. It costs manufacturers pennies to make them and they charge you dollars to buy them. So, so that's an easy way. Um, and whether or not you have kids choosing candy-free checkout lane is a great way to reduce impulse buys. <laughs> All right, so now you're home for the store and I see we're um, you know, kind of getting close to the end, but real quickly, there's a sense of saving time by doing some food preparation in advance. Um, so while you're talking on the phone or watching TV, thinking about um, cutting up vegetables and putting them in the fridge for a meal tomorrow. Um, think about pre-portioning snacks that come in bulk into um, individual portion sizes so they're ready when you're ready for a snack. Um, think about taking the bulk um, meat and dividing into smaller um, containers. And then if you're ambitious, making ahead some food that can be eaten um, during the week is terrific. Each time you cook, um, if you double the recipe, uh, you can either eat that later in the week or freeze the leftovers for your own inexpensive, healthy convenience meals. 
So I think this goes without saying, and it's funny as the pandemic comes to an end, one of the best ways to lower your grocery costs is to make things yourself because you pay a lot more when somebody else does the work. So um, even if you don't have a whole lot of time, you might be creative and once in a while, um, you know, making up some things. These are just some of the things I cost. I bought fruit salad pre-made and almost died in shock to have to pay $10 for what I knew was $4 worth of fruit. Um, you know, it could have been done while I was listening okay. to a podcast or watching TV, um, you know, um, snack packs, those little packs with nuts and cheese and dried fruit can be made up for um, pennies, making your own soup, you can make it a lot lower in sodium and have six jar, you know, I like to use canning jars, I'll make it into six canning jars of soup, um, you know, for half the price of a can at the store, muffin mix, pancake mix, you can make up ahead. Um, you can use whole grain flours, oatmeal and whole wheat. Um, you know, so these are just some of the things that you might think of what can I make myself um, either in the moment or ahead of time to save some money. Um, pizza, a quick and easy alternative to takeout would be to buy one of the whole wheat crusts that's already made, a jar of pizza sauce, a sprinkle of low fat, you know, part skim mozzarella, and you've got a pizza um, that's much healthier much lower in cost and takes no longer than going to pick it up or have it delivered. Coffee, I put at the bottom. If I had a nickel for every person I know who spends $10, $15 a week on their morning coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, um, you know, that's another way, uh, different things to make at home and save. So, I think one of the biggest dents in our food budget is when we're eating out. And I don't mean the kind of eating out that's to celebrate a special or occasion or to have a Friday night date. I mean, the kind of eating out that we don't have a meal planned and it's a quarter of six at night and we're starving and we choose some kind of fast food um, or we're out all day and um, find ourselves hungry. You know, it's lunchtime and um, the only thing available is McDonald's. So, we can count on getting hungry every three to five hours and a little planning ahead to make sure that we've got, um, that we're not using our money that way unless we're choosing to do it for the pleasure and enjoyment of it. So eat before you go, stock your car with uh, refillable water bottles or water bottles and some snacks. Um, if you're out and about and you, you know, need to get something, consider going to the supermarket. There's some things there that you could pick up that would be healthy and less um, costing your typical fast food. Um, you know, again, if you um, were choosing between French fries and burgers, you know, you might be able to get a sandwich on whole grain at uh, like a Subway shop with lots of veggies. Um, if you are choosing to eat out or stuck eating out, uh, you can often substitute um, a, sa a side salad or a fruit at even fast food places now. And get in the habit of always ordering the smallest portion size, whether you're out for ice cream or French fries or getting a drink. Um, they say, what size do you want? A small will give you the taste and the flavor and the experience without extra calories. And of course, rethink your drink. Again, this has to do with, um, you can get water for free, even at a fast food restaurant um, and save yourself a couple bucks on soda. And just real quickly, I, I put a, a little chart up here that I like to think about what are some portable things you can take with you. This could be if you're traveling instead of eating at a rest stop, or this could be when you're just out running errands over lunchtime that you have something um, you know, that, that's healthy with you. Generally, some kind of healthy carbohydrate, a fruit or a vegetable or a whole grain combined with something rich in protein, um, peanut butter, nuts, uh, yogurt, string cheese are all portable um, things that you might um, take with you on the go. Real quick, just um, want to make this known that um, there are assistance programs uh, for nutrition that can help with food costs. Um, there's the SNAP um, program. There's WIC program for uh, families that uh, with pregnant women, breastfeeding women and children. Um, school nutrition programs and um, the TFAP program, you know, for low income. So know those programs are, are out there and available um, either to use yourself or to refer people to. Um, so no one goes hungry. And I leave you with this final message. Um, 
to remind that, that healthy eating is an investment um, in your health and your future, and that it may indeed save you money in the long run. Um, so I came across this, across this quote <laughs> um, that reminds us if you don't take the time um, for your wellness, we may be required to make time for our illness. Um, and so one of the biggest things we can do to improve our long-term health um, is healthy living and healthy eating is central to that. Uh, and I hope that I've shown that it can be done, um, you know, affordably and uh, simply um, and even not taking too much time. So thank you for your time and attention. And I'd love to answer um, any questions or Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. And if you want to stop sharing your screen and we can just look at each other, that would be, you know, good too. It's up to you if you want to. <laughs> yeah, Mary, are you able to see yet? Were you able to get it back? I can see you. Okay. Hey, Kevin, so, I, I, never, uh, I, I never got beyond the very first slide. Okay. I, 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 I heard everything. Yeah, and we I took some record notes. it. Okay, I was going to say if you want to go back um, and look at the recording. Okay. okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Yeah. Okay, that that's fine. If you.